Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly. At C A C H E F L Y dot com. Three, two, one. This is Twit Special number 184, recorded New Year's Eve. Beer tasting with Mary Jo Foley. Let's get ready, everybody. Cap down. Whoa! Five. Oh, four, it did it again. Three, two, one. Happy New Year! Happy New Year. It's 2014 in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Lillehammer, all over the world, in Berlin, and in Copenhagen, and Madrid, and Paris, and Rome. They're lighting up the Eiffel Tower right now. In my rejoice, everywhere, it is New Year 2014. And you're still going strong. I'm feeling fine, thanks to that cup of joe you gave me. That was good stuff. Now you're ready for some craft beers. <laughs> so I think a lot of you who watch Windows Weekly are pretty familiar with Mary Jo's aff- affinity for the brood, true, true the beer brood loaf of bread in a bucket. Uh, she uh, makes her own beer, right? I do. And uh, what kind of beer do you like to make? So I've made I made maybe four or five batches over time of beer, and I've made all different styles. So I've made some IPAs, some stouts. Porters. I've tried a little of everything. The I, ones that have come out the best are the stouts and the porters. And I know you like the hoppier beers. I do. Uh, so, uh, one of the things that Mary Jo did, she recently uh, won her uh, mug door. I don't know what it is. It's good. <laughs> she, I know. And you know why I'm so sad you guys can't see the, tonight? Because Rattle and Hum loaned me my mug so I could put it on the show. Can you take a picture and upload it to SkyDrive and we can show it? I should, because I have it here and I was going to show it tonight. (laughs) That's an accomplishment? Oh, let me tell you how you earn this fabulous mug at Rattle and Hum. First of all, Rattle and Hum is her local brew pub just downstairs and down the street a little ways, right? Yep, right. And uh, recently, like over the last six months or so, uh, you engaged in a beer tasting Voyage to earn yourself your own label that has her name on it, mug from Rattle and Hum. What did. did you have to do to get that mug, Mary Jo? So to get the mug at Rattle and Hum, you have to drink 40 styles of beer in 30 days. So that means not 40 beers, that means 40 different kinds of beer. It could be 40 beers, yeah, but it could be fi- more. You have to find 40 different kinds oh, of beer. Oh, but you're at Rattle and Hum. How many kinds of beer do they have there? Uh, they have 40 beers on tap every day, and on the taps tap. turn over a lot. On tap. Right. Uh, so that means it's not so hard in 30 days to try a broad variety. There's a local beer from our own Anderson Valley, the uh, Hop, yep. Hop Otlin uh, IPA. Yep. Um, so you have become, uh, in this in this odyssey of beer, mass beer consumption, you have become a craft beer guru. <laughs> At least an appreciator and an enthusiast, I'd say. What makes it a craft beer? Uh, Yeah, you know what? That's a a, a topic of very hot controversy, like what is a craft beer and what isn't. Because some people consider Yingling out of Pennsylvania a craft beer, and some people say no way. Because they were purchased by a large... Didn't Anheuser-Busch purchase them? Right. Sometimes it's if a bigger company purchases them. As as an example there is Goose Island. Another... um, Another consideration is how big are they, um, or do they do things locally? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different kind of amorphous things that people consider. Are you a craft beer or not a craft beer brewer? So there's no metric. It's really w- kind of just an agreement. It is, pretty much. Or disagreement, as the case Right, maybe. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to do with the number of barrels you produce or anything like that. I don't. I don't believe it does, though somebody in the chat room may correct me if I'm wrong. Because right. you know what? A lot of Windows Weekly and probably Twit viewers are 
very accomplished in beer brewing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to say the least. Beer yes, brewing I'm or beer drinking is really both. more. I think a little of both. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of cool. So yeah, in fact, as you said, Yingling, and and uh, they somebody immediately said, "Oh no, that's crap," and you know so yep. forth. So there is Great. there is debate uh, among the Sam Adams. I don't think you could anymore. You could call that a craft brew. I know. Well, although it was when it started, of course. Um, so uh, the legal definition, according to Belle Marie, is under 2 million barrels a year, which seems like Whoa. a pretty broad. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of barrels. That's a lot of beer. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, uh, so we have here, where did these uh, five beers that we're about to taste come from? Okay, so here, here's the backstory of what we're going to do tonight. We're going to okay. taste some beers on, on uh, Twit. And... Tony Wang and I were going back and forth about how should we do this. So I said, why don't I give you five styles of beer, and you pick five, and I'll pick five of the same style. Because some of the styles that are available on the West Coast, some of the, I mean, some of the beers, they're not available here and vice versa. So the five styles that we're going to taste tonight are Farmhouse, a wild slash sour beer, Imperial IPA, a scotch ale, and an imperial stout. And both of us are going to be tasting different beers, Leo, but we're going to taste the same style. At the I same see. Time. So you'll tell us what you're drinking, and we'll tell you what, what uh, exactly. we're drinking. Now, um, I don't know about Steve, but, you know, Steve's quite an enophile. I drink a lot of wine. Yeah. Uh, Steve's also a coffee lover, as am I. But I don't drink a lot of beer. Do you drink beer at all? I'm just sort of a simple Heineken guy. Oh, dear. We didn't know that. <laughs> I don't think Heineken really qualifies. No, I don't think so. That wow. one I think we can agree on. Is so we'll be broadening my horizons. He could have been worse. He could have said Coors Light. So uh, we're, we're talking something. You know what? We are going to broaden your horizon. Yeah. Now, I'm a neophyte here. one thing that we do know about Steve is that he is not a fan of the carbohydrate. And he has said many times, and I think this is the case, that beer is perhaps, for somebody on a low-carb diet, not ideal. So, Steve, I'm going to say Heineken Light. Yeah, <laughs> it should be light. So <laughs> no, it is. Uh, be, people often liken beer to really to bread in a bottle. I mean, yeah. because it is yep. it yeah. is a lot of carbs. Um, uh, Although hops is anti-inflammatory. So, so there's some benefit. That's 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 a good thing. And and as we know, alcohol in moderation sometimes yeah. is considered to have some health benefits. Yeah, a little bit of a um, stress reliever. But we're not going to invite you to drink too much of this beer, Steve. We're, not we're just going to you two. And I have to stay up a few more hours. So yeah. yeah so <laughs> we're just going to. This is a tasting. It is. It's yeah. a tasting. Think of it as a wine tasting. Same kind of thing. All right. So uh, I hope it's okay. Now, a beer, unlike wine, uh, doesn't... Oh, my goodness. Does not... This one is... Head on that. This one... This one... <laughs> not only does it have a foil and a cap, it now also oh, has a cork. cork. So this one is... Uh, this is quite... This is quite fancy. This is the uh, cr a Belgian uh, Lambic beer, Creek, from... Um, wow. From uh, Vlesenbeek, Belgium. And they wanted to keep yeah. it in the bottle. I am a fan of the Belgian uh, beers... Uh, started with the mass-produced Chimay, but uh, quickly uh, moved on to some of the better uh, Belgian beers, and I just think they're wonderful beers. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually has reintroduced me to the pleasure of beer because it, it really is good. It's really good. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Are you Do guys you, starting with that one, or are you guys starting with No, you tell us which way to go. I'm okay. just I'm starting with uh, opening it because it's got okay. a cork in it. It's quite a... I know. Elaborate uh, process so, here. Right. Mary Jo, is it a universal fact that that first sip of beer somehow is like more amazing than the rest of the bottle? <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's true, but no? I can tell you the way people who taste beer taste it is first they smell the beer, mm -hmm. they look at the color, Sounds they like appreciate wine. the color. Right. Um, and then you kind of take a big swig of it and let it go all <laughs> into your mouth. Just enjoy it and feel the sensation of the beer. Now, wine, you often will, you'll chew a little bit and you'll slosh, but I wouldn't do that with a fermented beverage because it's going to be a little bit, you might yeah, foam, we, yeah, we, foam up a little happens. bit. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but we, but you want to kind of chew on it. You want to kind of get the, get the f molecules mixed up into the, into yeah, the mouth. Yeah, you there do. You, you want right. to get it all, all in all of your senses okay. and enjoy it. So tell us where we should start and we will follow your lead. We've okay. got Mission Dark Seas. We've got yep. Tank 7. Uh, yep. Farmhouse Ale. Uh, we've got Dog... Uh, what? Denogonizer. 
<laughs> Drake's you know, the noggin We've got uh, yeah. Traquar, Traquare, yeah, House Ale, and then, as I mentioned, the Creek yeah. Lambic. Um, Let's our, start with the Creek, since you guys just all mentioned right. that. And this is Belgian. Yep. Um, so this is a Lambic, also known as a wild beer. Whoa, look at the color. First of all, right. it's, it's red. It looks like Kool-Aid. I'm feeling right. right at home here, Leo. So Lambic, yeah. what does that mean? Lambic that means foam. the brewer has introduced either wild yeast or bacteria Skull. like Brett. Uh, I don't know how you say this word exactly. Brettonomoises or Bretts. I just call them Bretts into the beer that makes it sour. You know, it's interesting because that's a technique also used like in uh, in wine-making with botrytis and other bacteria. I love the smell. It actually yeah. is a very fruity smell. It almost smells like pomegranates. Or What are you yeah. drinking? You're drinking a similar uh, style, yeah? I'm drinking a beer called the um, St. Breda Wild Ale from Crooked Stave in Colorado. Okay. So this also is a wild ale, but not fruity like yours. It's, take it's not. A, is it a lambic? It's a. It's a sour. <laughs> it's a sour. Okay. It's good. Steve apparently loved this. Yeah. He just took the bottle away this from is, me. Forget the Heineken. Yeah. It. It. But it does look like a fruit juice, and in the uh, in the nose is very fruity. Mm -hmm. oh, it almost. Wait till you get in there. <laughs> it's the sometimes sour and wild. Oh, the sweet wild mystery wild. of life! I have found you. <laughs> That's fab. That doesn't taste like beer at all. No. Right, right. It tastes more like wine than beer, right? Yeah, it tastes more like soda pop than it does, beer, actually. And it looks Although like I've it. had people say it tastes more like vinegar than anything else. Not this. It's not acidic uh, no. at all. No. It's a very. It's a lot of fruit. Um, I think this is quite good, and it doesn't in any way seem to remind me of beer. Yeah, you should try some. Uh, Liz just stole our bottle. <laughs> yeah, Liz, Liz should definitely be part of this here. <laughs> Liz, come on over. You don't have to hide. So, Mary Jo, uh, what is yours? Tell us a little bit about what you're tasting right now. Okay, so I'm tasting a beer called Crooked Staves St. Breda, and mine does not have fruit in it. It's um, It was brewed with oranges, <laughs> they say, but it doesn't taste like oranges. It tastes more very dry and Damn. crisp. I can't believe how good this is. <laughs> I, think, I think you guys have found your beer. This isn't beer. Drinking. This is, what is this? This is incredible. <laughs> yep. This doesn't taste like Heineken. No, I, I said <laughs> no, forget the Heineken. Taste like Heineken. I don't know where we're ever going to find this stuff. Wow. Well, what Tony do you think, Liz? Found it for you. Tony found it for you near the ah, quick it's a, brick a Beverages and more, yeah. yeah. So tell us, uh, tell us some of the characteristics of, of the Colorado uh, Lambic you're tasting. Mm. Okay, it's very, it's very dry. Um, it's very sour. Definitely not fruity, but very um, refreshing, kind of. This is very fruity, and I would not say it is in any way acidic. Uh, apparently, this is brewed with cherries. Yes. And that's the, uh, when you the have red. This group of cherries. Yeah, it's, yes. it's really very deliciously fruity. I would order this anywhere. Um, yep. Yeah. All right, so let's move on because I don't want to get uh, too. Oh, well, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, we should not have started with this. I have no, a feeling. This may, the, the rest may just be disappointing. Everything no, after this. Gonna, yeah. No, your next one you're going to like too, I predict. Okay, all right. We're going to taste next your um, Tank 7 Farmhouse. Tank 7 Farmhouse. Tell us a little bit about this craft ale. Okay, so this is more like a saison, which also can be very similar in terms of dry and but yet fruity. Something that wine drinkers also like a lot. Sometimes there's some spice to it. Um, it usually has a moderate tartness, but it's not real hoppy. And I'm drinking on my end something that's also considered a farmhouse beer from Baltimore, Maryland, called the Stillwater Small Black. It's a black saison. What is a saison? It's uh, I don't know if there's a I don't know if there's a firm definition. Somebody in the chat room may know that, but. Usually a beer that's brewed with a certain kind of yeast, I believe, that makes it um, have these properties of being fruity and tart. It's fruity and tart. Going back to this. Yes. Steve does not like it. No. What? What is? He does not like it. Well, you probably probably shouldn't have started him off with no, the cherries. No, I got candy that back Yeah, here. so uh, describe what your experience of that is. Uh, okay, really so mine awful. is very different from yours, but mine is a black saison. So if you could see my glass right now, my beer is black. Yeah, this is golden. Yep, yours is golden. You have black, black beer? 
Oh God, yes. yeah. She makes oh, yeah. black beer. If you make stouts or porterhouses, uh, porter uh, porters rather, porterhouses a steak. Okay, part <laughs> of it was following that. Yeah, that. I think we we should cleanse but, our palate but, with some sand, <laughs> and then yeah. uh, and then we can uh, try this here. Let me. The second sip was a lot better than the first one, so forgive the first one. No, so it's still something that, you, as a wine drinker, I think you can identify with. There's some tartness. It's not like all hops. It's not all bitter. It's it's still got a lot of properties of something that might be familiar to a wine drinker, I think. No, this is quite good. This oh, is quite good. Though. And, uh, yeah. it, okay, so uh, also still a little bit fruity. This is not uh, a little hoppy, but not too hoppy. Mm -hmm. uh, I like a little hop myself. What you, you would you characterize hoppiness as bitterness? I know that's what Paul thinks yes, of it as. I would, but he's I just would. a bitter man. He's a very bitter man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, now this this is from the Smokestack series, um, and there is a little uh, smokiness perhaps yeah. to the flavor. Yep. The one the one you're out. drinking is from a brewery in Kansas City. Right. Um, but, this reminds me a lot of the of the Belgian ales that I most like. This feels right. very Belgian to me. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's from Boulevard Brewing in Kansas City, but it's definitely more a Belgian style. I like it. Yep. I like that one, too. It's quite good. Really it's good. much more like beer. Tank 7. Yeah, it tastes like beer, says Steve Gibson. <laughs> and how do you like yours? I like mine. Mine tastes almost like a black IPA for people who know that style, mm -hmm. um, but it's very good too. Um, a little bit more saisonic than an IPA, but but I think yours is probably more like a more of a traditional saison slash farmhouse. It's very good. Um, we we are of course in an IPA area. A lot of IPAs here. This is this is a, and that's a hoppy, a very hoppy beer. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, our own Lagunitas, which is considered, I think, by many to be one of the best uh, craft brew houses in the country, is uh, has a great I agree. IPA. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. All right. So I'm I'm liking this Tank Seven. Uh, frankly, I think I prefer it. It's much more of a beer than uh, y your fruit juice over there. You can you can keep the the creek. <laughs> Steve's up the creek and he doesn't want any more. That's. <laughs> All right, so let's retire the Tank 7. Where should we go next? Now we're going to do an IPA. Let's go bitter now. Oh, great. Okay, we're going to do, we're both doing an Imperial IPA now, which means a double IPA. Oh, okay. And I've seen triple even. Does that, yep. that refers to the quantity of hops in the IPA. Right. Uh, if yeah. a double IP, uh, so you know an, an IPA is a lot of hops, a lot of bitterness. So a double IPA is even more hops, <laughs> <laughs> but also more alcohol. So it's usually sweeter, um, but also more hoppy. So Leo, you're drinking one that I've had before called the Drake's Denogonizer from San Leandro, <laughs> and it, that is one of my favorites. It sounds it's, like one of the NSA technology. <laughs> Liz Romero loves it. She's going, yeah. Know. She's going to get out there and drink some with us because this is her favorite style, I believe. Now, you said this is more alcoholic, but it's not a lot more. It's 9.75% right. alcohol. <laughs> Um, that's not a whole. I think that's much like a, a wine. Double hops, right? So double anti It's going to be. Double yes, hops, good for double, the good for the soul. Yeah. The and you see I'm it as a much more of a of a darker uh, yeah. amber color. Yeah. Mine and mine is very golden. I'm drinking a double IPA from Pennsylvania called Victory's Dirt Wolf. Victory's Dirt Wolf. Right. Victory Brewing is a big brewery out here in Pennsylvania, um, and this is their newest beer. One of their newest beers. It's a double IPA. And it's very citrusy. Woo! I just smelled it. <laughs> oh, I could, you know, I smell, I would say, dog urine. Uh, well, I would say, when you're not <laughs> drinking enough water. <laughs> Does it not um, have a little bit of a, a uric uh, tang? To, that's, the, I, that's the hops, of course. Woo. Yeah, there's a lot of hops in, this, in both of these beers. <laughs> it should be a lot of citrus. <laughs> There's a lot of citrus. There's a lot going on. This is a much more complex beer, and it is it is what Liz Romero. I could I could tell this is Liz's kind of beer. I yep. Think yeah. Yeah. Dog. 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 Um, you know, it's okay. it, the, the quality. Uh, you know, I have to say, when you do it like this, there is a very distinct style to each of these. They're hugely different. There is. Very different. Yes. And you could taste the hops in here. Very. It's. Yep. But I. Uh, you know, I would say hoppiness might be an acquired taste. Whatever. Um, I haven't acquired it. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, that's one of my favorite things. Take about the dog 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 organizer. No, the one of my favorite things about <laughs> beer is you have four ingredients that make up beer. You yeah. have water, yeast, hops, and what's the fourth? <laughs> Bacterium. No, um, grains. How can I forget? Grains. grains. That's kind of <laughs> the base, isn't it? The grain. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of the base. And so you, all of these beers, as different as they are, are made of those four things. Right, right. Which is crazy, right? Well, yeah, it's I mean, like wine. It's I mean, it, that's what's so amazing right. about and these variation in the grain. Because and, of the way it's fermented, exactly. the yeasts in the air, and all of that make yeah. a huge yeah. difference. So I, 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 you know, I thought that the, actually the dog, the organizer was quite good. It's over there now. I like that beer. It, you know, uh, it is hoppy, <laughs> and that is something that you have to get used to. But I, I don't mind a hoppy beer. I still like the Tank 7. Uh, probably the best. So you've taught me a lot already. We've tried some very interesting beers, starting with a weird Creek Lambic with cherries. It really was almost a fruit punch. Uh, the very uh, Belgian Tank 7 style, the super hoppy uh, Denogonizer. And now we've got two beers left. And which one would you like us to uh, do next? Okay, now we're getting to the heavy stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> but, I, but I think you'll like both of them. We're going to start with the um, Scotch Ale. So for you, Leo, that is the, um, what is what was yours? It's the it Troquair House yep. Ale. The Troquair House Ale from Scotland. Wow. And, I, you know, I'm a Scot, so I like porridge. I like haggis. I like lassies in the heather. <laughs> so I think I might like this. It says uh, fermented in oak barrels, which is yes. uh, that's un is that unusual for a beer? No, uh, a lot of beers are fermented in different kinds of barrels. There's um, oak barrels. There's Bible even Chardonnay barrel. barrels. There's all really? kinds of barrels. Oh, yes. interesting. You yes. know, I also buy whiskey fermented in stout barrels. So it, what goes around comes around is barrel sharing. This is much darker, uh, it is. Uh, almost a car as Steve said, a caramel color. Yeah. Yep. So the way they make scotch ales, which are also called wee heavies, is they... <laughs> it's a wee boil, heavy. <laughs> they boil them an extra long time in the kettle, so it comes out very caramelized and sweeter, oh, fuller bodied. Oh, interesting. The one I'm drinking is from one of my favorite breweries in the U.S. called Founders from Michigan. I'm drinking the Dirty Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> It's get me, get me belly, baby. <laughs> well, that's fat bastard. Okay. Yeah. The so, dirty um, bastard. Wow. Dirty bastard and the one you are drinking. We're both drinking the same style, which is the Scotch ale. So I love the. Calmly. I love the smell. Yes. That's yeah. Really it, good, I smell right? the peat moss and the moors and the heather. Mm -hmm. It is a very rich, but you smell the caramel smell. Yeah. So yeah. what you're saying is that the sugars that are still in the fermenting ale, because they're cooked, they're starting to caramelize a little yes. bit. And that gives yes. it this dark caramel color and a sweet, definitely a sweet bouquet. Let's taste it. Mm -hmm. Oh, how sweet it is. It's very good. Yes, and <laughs> it's, got, it's um, less effervescent than some of the other ones. It is. It's I think that's typical of uh, British ales, yes? Well, you, yeah, Scotch, British. And I'm, even the one I'm drinking, there's not a lot of head on the right. um, Dirty Bastard either. This is good. But you taste the caramelization, don't absolutely. you? You do. Yeah. And a lot, much less bitter than the last one we just had, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. very hoppy, right? Not hoppy at all. Nope. But a nice high alcohol, but not overly boozy beer, I think. Now, would you, uh, you know, we talk all the time about pairing wine with food, but I think beer and food pairings make sense as well. Definitely. Uh, and I'm not just talking hamburgers and buffalo chicken wings. I mean, what would you, what would you eat? Fish and chips. <laughs> what would you eat with a? This is because it's it's very big. Yeah. It feels like you would want a steak with this or something pretty heavy. It also would work with a dessert, I think. Ah, because of the sweetness. Right. Yeah, a chocolate, a mud pie would be very good with this. That would be good with that. Mm, yeah, that mm, would be delicious. Yeah, mm -hmm. that. Chocolate pie is where you <laughs> mm -hmm. where you want mm -hmm. this. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is good. I like yeah, that. I could, yeah. yep. Boy, the, you know, what's interesting is how very different each of these is when Indeed. you take the time to taste it and, and to think about what you're tasting. Mm -hmm. And to line them up. And, and well, look at the colors. Look at the yeah. color differences. They're really quite vast. Yeah, we got this guy. And there's, that's the... And then the bright yeah. guy. And yep. that's the Same bear piss. Yep. So, okay. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> there, I mean, this almost looks like, uh, this looks like the science experiment we were doing doing yeah, earlier, right? doesn't it? They're all yeah. different colors. Well, we only have one left now. Ours is the Mission Dark Seas Russian Imperial Stout. This is the most alcoholic of all of them, 9.8%. Yeah. 
alcohol. Yes. And mine, I believe, is even more. I'm drinking the New Holland. Oh, my Michigan. God. Whoa. This is like molasses. I think it went badly. <laughs> Holy cow. Add no, some sand to it. <laughs> look at the look at the legs on that. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is. Yeah, I'm this afraid is, of that one. This is like molasses. <laughs> Looks like a These milkshake. These are big beers. Yeah. Very big beers, but very delicious beers. Um, w- what makes this so dark and uh, and uh, and rich? And by the way, a, a very thick head on this. Yeah. Yes. So the same way that an imperial IPA is double the hops and double the bitterness, <laughs> an imperial stout is. Double the hops and double the dark malts. Ah, now I'm a fan of malts, I have okay. to say. But I mean, right. more like malted milk, you know, malt, your malted milk Here's balls. Here's chocolate pie. Malted shakes. Let me, Whoa. This is chocolate pie? Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is 40 weight, is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. yeah, this is synthetic. Yeah, so my wow. I'm drinking. <laughs> this tastes like chocolate. Yeah. yeah, mine tastes like that too. Mine is a uh, an imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels. Oh my god, this is yeah. phenomenal! This is dessert. It is. It's dessert. That really tastes like chocolate, and it would be fabulous with chocolate, yes, uh, or maybe not. Would. I don't know. Maybe you wouldn't want to mix the two. No, but... it, it would be. And I do, and I do taste the uh, malt very much so in here. Yeah. Yes. So I I pair this when I have these kind of beers with. Uh, dessert, chocolate. Um, in fact, I have some chocolate-covered figs oh. for later. Oh, oh, mama! Which is your favorite of the of the oh. of the five? Go right back to the pink. Guy. Steve likes oh. Steve likes the fruit juice. <laughs> Basically, it's the rosé of fine but beers. Taste it now. After you just had. <laughs> you know what? I, I I have trouble picking a favorite because these styles are so different. I feel like they're all my children. <laughs> They're all your children. You know what? They are really different. And in fact, I I think anybody uh, watching who has the chance to do something yeah. like this, it would really behoove you to do so. Line them uh, up. Or maybe go somewhere like Rattle and Hum in New York City. Or where do you like to go? Taps? Yeah. We have a very good tap room here in the, in the Petaluma uh, where you can line these up and you can say, I'd like to try these different styles. Because when you do taste them like this, you really, there is a massive difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really true. Very educational, they Mary Jo. What as fun! They look. Yeah, but all of them de- delicious in their own way. I could see why you would you would it would be more what mood you're in, what time of day, what you're eating, totally. that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, right, I- exactly. Yeah. And I want to I want to bring up one more thing because some people have asked me this who've listened to Windows Weekly. They said, "How do I start home brewing?" And I would say, if you have a small kitchen like me, my kitchen literally is about six feet by ten feet. In size. A typical New York kitchen. A typical very, New York kitchen. Very small. I, I only brew beer by the gallon, but if you right. look up Brooklyn Brew Shop, you can get a really cheap starter beer kit and find out a lot about brewing beer just by getting their cookbook, which has beer recipes, and just trying out some brewing mm. on your own. Is there any safety hazard? Any danger? Yes. You uh, must yeah, tend to I it or it could explode. <laughs> Right. I, I over-carbonated a couple beers, and they exploded onto my ceiling. And one broke in my closet and got all my clothes covered with porter. That was fun. It's only a hazard if you mind I smelling like beer. Mine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, but I, you know what would be so valuable in doing this? And maybe you wouldn't make a beer that you'd say is equivalent of any of these really good beers. But you would On learn purpose. by adding ingredients and so forth what taste changes there are. You know, let me put some Definitely. more hops in this, and you'll yep. learn how that changes the cherries. taste. Yeah. Right. Or cherries. I, I brewed one of my favorite beers I brewed, I used dried coconut in it and it it was a porter I made wow. and it was delicious. Wow. Now I have to say I loved uh, the the uh, lambic beer when we because we started with it. Yeah. But, but I, after t- yeah. tasting all these other beers, I'm much less enamored of it. It's really kind of fruity and yeah. a fruit juice. Yeah, uh, compared to, this feels more like beer, yeah. you know? Right. Yeah, you agree. I tried yeah. to start you with the lighter beers. I think you were smart. I well, I questioned your judgment, Mary Jo, but I was wrong. I'm glad you, you came around. <laughs> what fun, Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> this is great. Thank you for doing this with us. Oh, thanks for letting me do it. That was really fun. Wasn't that great? Mary Jo Foley, she's at allaboutmicrosoft.com, and of course, uh, the host with uh, Paul Therod of Windows Weekly. Our next Windows Weekly is... 
feels like Thursday. tomorrow, day after tomorrow, yeah. Thursday, <laughs> 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC, the first show of 2014. And thanks for waking up so early this morning. I really yep. was glad that you and Paul were yeah. there. It made me feel quite at home to show up here so early in the morning and see you guys in your shiny uh, I can't believe you're still going, Leo. You're like you're like an <laughs> Energizer bunny. You're I'm having going. fun. You know, I was not. I really wasn't worried about this as long. I knew that I would have no trouble as long as there was continuous yes. entertainment. Yes. And there has <laughs> been, thanks to you. So, thank. I'm I'm quite entertained. Thank you, Mary Jo Foley. Good. Thank All you right, for having me care. on again. All righty. Okay. Bye bye. We talk love Mary Jo, and it's another reason that I wanted to do this is a chance for us to celebrate our hosts, our wonderful staff, in a way that wasn't that took them out of their element so that we could see another side of them to see some of their <laughs> to see some of their passions to see some of the things that they love to do when they're not talking about tech and i think that's been so much fun yeah. i mean you know we i know mary jo loves beer and she has a beer pick every week on windows weekly but this was great this was a great learning experience